Oh, oh, oh. that was too close. Down in the Hello and welcome to the channel. I don't have any grass to mow yet. It's going to be at least another two weeks before I have anything to mow. But I know you want to see this new Toro mower. So let's do a walk around review. We're going to take a look at all the features and all the little details on it to help you decide if this is the best mower for you or not. First off, this Toro time cutter comes in different sizes and different engine combinations. So <clears throat> the base model is a single cylinder 42 inch stamp deck. They also have a V-twin Toro engine option for the base model. For all the other models you can either get the Toro uh, professional series engine or the Kawasaki FR 691 V engine on it. This particular model here has the Kawasaki engine and the 50 inch fabricated deck. So besides the 42 inch stamped deck you can, al you can also get it in the 50 inch fabricated deck and the 60 inch fabricated deck. The time cutter also comes with the MyRide suspension platform and you can get that model with either the Kawasaki or Toro engine, again, and a 42-inch fabricated deck, a 50-inch, or the 60-inch fabricated deck. Okay, so what Toro has done this year is they have designed one frame and then put different length front caster arms on it, depending on the size of the deck that you have. So if you have a 42 inch, these are going to be shorter, 50 inch here, they're about 6 inches, and the 60 inch, they're a little bit larger. These are cast, so they're strong for aluminum. My guess is they probably weigh about the same as the steel tube that you normally would see on these. So you're not losing any weight for balancing. One thing I do like about these casters is they have two sealed ball bearings in them. No more having to worry about grease zerks and brass bushings and the casters getting stiff or the bushings wearing out. They've also put nice, uh, looks like 10 gauge, maybe a little thicker, 10 gauge front forks on it and big wide front tires. They put these wide front tires on all the machines so you're gonna have plenty of flotation and these are not going to rut your lawn like the smaller casters used to. Toro also took and put a step here, a cutout, so that you can step up from the front of the deck. I don't know about you, but I'm getting pretty old and stiff, and stepping onto the mower from the side and stepping across these bigger decks is hard for me to do. So this is nice having this step here so I can just come on the front of it. That's about it for the front end, so let's move on around. Okay, so moving on around, a feature of the Toro that you may not be aware of is the smart speed control. This lever here gives you three speeds on your mower. Fast for cutting, slower for towing, and then slow for trimming. What this does for you is this allows you to tow heavier loads without overheating your transmissions and in the turtle speed or the slow speed it's really nice for trimming because you can run your engine at full rpm and you don't have to worry about the machine jerking on you when you move the handles everything goes nice and smooth and and uh, it's a really nice feature and then if you're mowing or just running around the yard then you can put it in the rabbit it's also nice because if you have an inex it's also nice because if you have an inexperienced operator, uh, you can throw it in 
toe or turtle and that gives them a gives them a chance to learn how to use the machine without it getting crazy on them. Toro put a little plastic tray in here for storage. Uh, you can put your gloves and stuff like that in there if you want to. And it does have holes in it so the water will leak out of it if it rains. All right, moving on. Okay, Toro does not use any springs to uh, assist you in lifting of the decks. What they do is they give a night give you a nice long handle for the 42 inch decks and then they add a foot pedal over here for the 50 and the 60 inch decks. So when you go to lift a 50 inch deck put your foot on here press on it then use that with the handle to raise them up and down. So they do have a nice range of, of cutting heights on it from a low of one and a half to a high of four and a half. A couple things I like about this system is this bar here is reinforced so it won't bow on you over the years uh, so everything stays nice and solid. They've had this system here on for quite a while on their machines and no matter what you do it doesn't bounce out of these slots. All right, so let's do the deck next. All right, let's talk about the decks a little bit. The Toro Time Cutter, they have a 42, a 50, and a 60 inch deck available. The 42 is a stamped deck. The 50 inch is a 10 gauge fabricated deck. And the 60 inch is also a 10 gauge fabricated deck couple of nice things about the deck is 10 gauge, just to give you an idea, 10 gauge deck is what most of the entry level commercial decks are built on. Uh, it's a nice heavy steel. Uh, in fact, they only go up to 7 gauge for most heavy duty commercials. This particular deck has an extra 7 gauge skirt around the bottom of it that makes it nice and stiff and also if you hit something with it, you won't bend the deck in near as fast as you would with, with other decks. Uh, they also do make a bull nose deck that goes that on the Titan mowers that has a rounded front edge here. That's even a little stronger if you uh, have teenagers or something like that where you really where you really need a deck that's that's strong. But this is the heaviest one you're going to get on a on a residential mower, particularly in this price range. It comes with two washout ports, one on each side, so you get plenty of cleaning power if you want it. One of the really nice features about these is the easily removable belt pulley covers. You just snap right on, snap right off. Let's see how easy it goes back on. Yep, goes right back on. Heavy duty springs, big heavy duty springs, heavy duty holders here for the spring. Uh, if you need to change belts, all you have to do is loosen this. All your tensioners come loose, so the belts is easy to easy to change. One nice thing that I like about it is if you are in heavy weeds or something like that, and you happen to pop your belt off, the belt diagram is right here, so you can put it back on out in the field. You don't have to go find your manual to figure out how to get the belts all back on. It has three anti-scalp rollers on it and they're adjustable. And there's a little marking right here to show you what's, what they recommend, where to put them for the different cut heights. For example, I'm gonna be running at uh, three and a half to four inches. So I'll probably put these in the bottom hole. Well, I got, well, I'm over here on this side. Take a look at the belts quick. Boy, this is so nice. I like this a lot. So they have nice deep dish, deep pulleys on them. So your belts don't flop off. They have a horsepower belt on it. See that uh, Kevlar style belt. So you're not going to burn them up very easily. 
They do have sealed bearings on this, which I expect for this type of mower, especially today now, the sealed bearings will last just as long as the greased ones. If you look at the idler arm area here, let me use my pointer. If you look at the idler arm here, that's all heavy 10 gauge or thicker steel and nice big hole to work with. Nice big uh, washer to hold it all in place, hold the bearing all in place. I like that a lot. They've done a lot of little design work on this deck to make it last. All right, moving around. I have the discharge chute up so you can see one of the features of this deck. This is an interesting argument. Consumer Reports gave this deck a hard time because to put the bagger on, you need to remove your plastic discharge chute. And they said that was a safety hazard. Well, no, it's not a safety hazard. When you take your bagger off, you put your chute back on. It goes on real easy, just one pin and it pops right on and off. There's no wrenches or bolts to do it. Here's the other washout port. They also have a little panel here that uh, when the grass is coming out, instead of it running back into the deck, this keeps the, the grass coming out of the deck easier. This cutout is also nice because that, that makes the bagger attachment about four inches shorter than if it was straight across here. It's another nice little feature that they put on this machine. It's pretty well thought out. Take a look at a couple other things. Most everybody has cross braces. These brace, braces here keep the deck top nice and stiff so it doesn't bend. If you happen to hit something with a hit your blade, you don't warp your top of your deck. All right, here's another picture of the top of the deck. You can see the belt coming around the front pulley here. See another set of stationary idlers. Whereas there's only one movable idler on this, the rest of them are all stationary. So you don't have any extra bearings or anything like that to deal with. And it's a nice straight shot back to the motor. And you shouldn't see a lot of wobbling around with this belt when it's running at full speed. I like the deep pulleys on it, like I said before. And these new spindle covers are going to be nice. I want to enjoy being able to take this take them off and cleaning the deck after I've done leaves and dry grass and stuff like that. Okay, this is a three-point deck. So you have one mount in the front and two in the rear. They're all cotter pin um, or quick safety pins. So it's e the deck is easy to drop off of here if you need to do it. All right, let's take a quick look underneath the deck. Four bolt spindles, aluminum spindles, sealed bearings, nice heavy duty blades. These blades are gonna last you, um, easily last you a year, probably longer if you wanna take and file them yourself. Bottom of the deck is nice and smooth. There's no areas that I can see for it, the grass to catch and build up on. The back here, the baffles, those help you help the grass to come back around, and then come back out the top and out the side discharge. It's got a nice lip on the top here to uh, add for extra strength. You don't always see that with these decks, but this is a nice one here. Uh, I don't know what the bolt holes are for. Someday I'll ask some, one of the Toro reps. Just a quick look underneath the deck so you can see what you're getting underneath there. Uh, I like how smooth it is. I like that there's no dips or bumps or anything to mess with the airflow of the deck. Standard blades that you get on it are side discharge blades. Uh, they have a nice cup to them, so they do throw the grass out well. Uh, it'll be a few weeks before I get a chance to mow with this to see how evenly it goes. 
these blades look like they'll do a good job. Most of the time, evenly spreading the grass evenly is, is the discharge, not the decks themselves. But the, this deck with the opening on the end and the smooth underneath it, I expect this to mow really well. This is basically the same deck that Toro's been using for the last couple of years. Uh, Consumer Reports just rated this as the best cutting deck out there. Uh, the machine that they looked at is the MyRide. This one's not the MyRide, of course. But uh, they said it's the best cutting, and they rated it better than the John Deere decks, which have been the leaders for years. So that's pretty exciting to me that uh, they say this deck is going to cut as well as I think it's going to. All right, let's move on. All right, let's take a look at the lap bars quick. Toros have an automatic brake on them. When you open up the lap bars, the brake automatically sets. That's nice because you don't have an extra lever to deal with. Plus, you don't have to remember to turn the brake off when you go to move it or make for sure the brake is on when you go to start it. It's just all automatic. The handles itself, there are one inch steel, they're real solid. They have a grip on the top of them. I think this grip is going to wear very well. Uh, I haven't seen any of them with nicks or tears in them, so looks like a good grip. I like the adjustments on the Toro. I've owned a lot of zero turns over the years that have had different ways to adjust the handles on them. Ten years ago, you couldn't even get an adjustment on most of them. So what they've got here is they have three height adjustments. You can raise up the bars another inch if you, if you want it. Plus, you can adjust, tilt the bar forward and backwards. So you can make it for short, skinny people, tall people, short, fat people. Yes, I'm fat, so I can say that. As you can see, I've got the handle set per, all the way forward and all the way down, and it's just right for me. Moving on, they've changed the, the control panel just a little bit. You can't get it much simpler than this. You have your electric PTO clutch for the deck, key switch, choke, and throttle. So everything is nice and clean. They've changed the, the fender just a little bit from, from previously. This all used to be in a line, so, it used to, so the storage compartment in the back was a lot smaller. So you get a nice large storage compartment on it nowadays. All right, so let's see what's under the seat. All right, underneath the seat, it's pretty open. There's lots of holes underneath here. So even if you do get dead grass and stuff like that, leaf blower, you can blow this all out nice and nice and easily. Uh, not many places for stuff to stick and get wet. Battery, starter solenoid, electric brake. One thing I really like about the Toros this year is they have a big suspension spring underneath the seat. Um, I had a chance to run around with this in the yard a little bit, and it is a lot more comfortable than my Xmark. The Xmark springs are about half this size. So I really have to say I like how well this machine runs out on the lawn. The uh, My Ride is nice for rough lawns, but I don't think you're going to complain at all about this mowing with this one either. So uh, I like the suspension on it. Okay, the seat itself, it's a nice two-part seat. Nice gap here so the water runs off of it, doesn't collect in here, and you get a wet spot on your rear end after a rain. I do like the armrests on these a lot. These are molded armrests, so they don't uh, fall apart over the years. The time cutter uh, has mechanical or two... two uh, knobs that you loosen to slide the seat back and forth on. If you move up into the Titan series, then you get the, the, the easy adjust. But this is nice too. It's pretty simple to adjust. Just loosen these two, move your seat, 
tighten them back down again. Nice big rod here to hold everything in place. So one thing I want to show you about the Kawasaki engine or the Toros. On the Toro machine, they have a quick, easy oil drain on it. It's a tube that comes up here. You just unlatch it and drop it down. You can change your oil. The Kawasaki still uses the, the valve down here. Let me see if I can get this. Can you see it? There it is. Okay. It's got a, there's a plastic tube that you put on it. And then you unscrew this to drain your oil. It's a little bit more work, but the plastic hose is plenty long. So it drains out off of that, that uh, engine mounting bracket. Filter is easy to get at. Oil is easy to check. That's the only real difference. Filters over here on the side, again, that's real easy to change out. Here's your gas tank. What else do I want to talk about? There's something else I want to talk about in here. All right, let's see if you can see it. There it is right there. Right in the center of the screen, there's a little shock. That is the dampener. Can I get this right? There. That is the dampener for the steering. There's one on each side. All right, you can see the other one down underneath the gas tank over there. Stiff dampeners are nice on, on zero-turn mowers. Okay, what dampeners are for is you're mowing along and you got the arms all the way forward and you hit a bump and without the dampeners, you're going to move your arms and the machine's going to jerk on you. If you're trimming, stuff like that, if, you got a, if you're on a machine with bad dampeners or no dampeners on them at all, the machine does a lot of jerking around and it, it's really hard to use that way. So Toro puts nice stiff dampeners on theirs. Uh, if you're mowing, whatever speed you're mowing at, the arms stay put. Uh, they don't want to move on you, even if the ground is really rough. So that's a feature that you don't find on all the machines, though you do find them on a lot more than you used to. One other feature about having a steering damp, you don't have to put constant pressure on the lap bars when it's going forward. In other words, they kind of stay in place for you. And that's a lot easier on your shoulders. Your shoulders won't get stiff after an hour or so driving them. So, other nice little feature. All right, moving on to the back. This machine that I have has the Kawasaki FR691V engine in it. This is Kawasaki's good residential engine. And it's rated at about 23 horsepower. It's real easy to work on. Lift this up, change your filter. Intake here so you can loosen this up and change your filter without any problems. Spark plugs are easy to get at here and over on the other side. Cables are easy to adjust. I've never seen a problem with a Toro, but some of the other brands, particularly uh, brands that have Briggs & Stratton engines in them, for some reason they don't get the choke adjusted right and when you get it home and go to use it, or after a while, the thing will be very hard to start. You'll have to crank it over for 15, 20 seconds or longer before it actually starts. What happens is the cable slips right here in this little clamp. So if you got a lawn tractor or something like that, it won't start. Or if your neighbor gets a new one and it won't start, check out this the choke cable and make for sure that the choke is closing fully, adjust it and tighten it back down again. And you'll find that it'll start a lot better. Okay, I don't have anything bad to say about the Kawasaki engines at all. Um, I don't think that they're worth an extra three, four hundred dollars compared to a, a Kohler 7000 or the Toro for that matter. But if you can, uh, if they're only asking you for another, if they're only asking another hundred dollars or so for the Kawasaki. Yeah, it's a good engine. You'll like it a lot. All right, so let's take a look at the bottom. 
Here's the transmissions, one on each side. In the center there, the pulley, that's the drive belt for the deck. Up above that is another pulley that runs off the top of the transmissions. The top belt, you probably won't have to change more than once every five years or so. This bottom belt, probably, it'll probably last you a long time. This is a good belt on this. So these little gears right here, those are the parking brakes on this. Toro uses a electric parking brake. So when you open up the handles, the parking brake set and it actually comes down and locks into those gears. That's uh, very convenient. As far as I'm concerned, uh, open them up. It automatically locks. You get off the machine. You don't have to worry about running around. You don't have to remember an extra lever to pull. You don't have to worry, remember to pull that extra lever to start the machine or to move the machine. And then up here, this is the muffler. And if you notice the exhaust here points out to the side, it doesn't point down. So that way you won't have any problems with the grass overheating, dry grass and catching your lawn on fire like some of them used to do. It also has heat shields on the top and the bottom. So it's protected well, and, it's, and also you're protected very well. Anything else under there you want to see? All right, moving on. Let's go take a look at the frame a little bit. Okay, Toro uses a, about a 2 by 4 channel frame, and then they have cross braces. The cross braces are bolted, riveted, welded in, so it's all very solid. Um, I don't ever hear of anybody having a bent frame on a Toro or a cracked one. Uh, they're stiff. They're going to hold up. They're going to last. The cross braces are all welded and boxed together, uh, particularly like this engine mount here. Everything is all heavy 10-gauge steel. This little lever right here, there's one on each side. If you want to move your Toro without the engine running, you pull these levers out on each side and that releases the transmissions. With the Toro, you also have to turn the key on and close the lap bars um, to release the parking brakes. And there is a way to release the parking brake if there's no power to it, like if you got a dead battery or something like that. And it's in your manual how to do that. The rear bumper or engine guard is nice and heavy too. It does have some cutouts in it, so it makes it nice and stiff so it doesn't rattle at certain RPMs. It's got a nice hitch on it. The hitch is uh, at least seven gauge. It's probably thicker than that. It's probably, it looks like it's almost a quarter inch. So that's nice and heavy. So that's about it on the back end. Is there anything I missed? Feel free to ask questions in the comments. I'll be glad to answer it. All right, moving around. Fuel cap is nice and big, easy to get your hands on. There's no ratchet to it. It goes down tight. It spins off very easily. Nice gasket here so it doesn't leak. Can you see down inside of it? There's a tube that goes all the way down inside. The bottom of the tube, that's the top of the gas tank. So don't fill it all the way to the top here. It'll just run out of breather someplace. So just fill it to the bottom of this tube. It does have a nice size three gallon gas tank on it. What do you think of this mower so far? Just to let you know, Consumer Reports has given this mower with the MyRide seat the highest rating this year. They give it the same excellent rating for cut quality, mulching and bagging as uh, what they've given the John Deere's over the years. So this one, in my opinion, I like how this deck is designed. I like how it gets the, it's going to get the grass out from underneath it very well. I like the fact that you can either put the Kawasaki engine on it or the Toro. Again, which is better? I always say I wouldn't pay any extra for a Kawasaki, but so many of the dealers really like the Kawasaki and, and how little problems they have with it. Um, they'll probably try and talk you into a Kawasaki. 
Um, Toro's a good engine too. Toro's had absolutely really good luck with that. A lot better luck than we've had with most of the engines in the past. So I want to show you three different accessories that you can get for this machine. First one is a the first one is a spring tool. All it is is a rod with a handle on one end and a hook on the other. If you need to change the deck belt on your machine, all you have to do is put it in the spring loop in the back here, pull on it, and then the spring comes right off of the, the carrier here. That makes, and then putting it back on again is a lot easier. This one little tool is gonna to save you a lot of frustration in changing your belts. And those are about four or five bucks. Toro sells one, and you can also buy them on Amazon. Just look for a spring puller, spring tool. Secondly, Toro makes a jack for this, so you can raise the front end up and work underneath it. The jack mounts here, and it's a bulldog screw jack. So the, the mount goes here. You can take the jack on and off if you don't want it on the machine and then you just screw it and it's their long jack the 15 inch stroke so you can raise this front end up quite a ways about like that so that you can uh, work underneath the deck change the blades clean the deck that type of stuff so that i think costs about a hundred and i want to say 35 dollars i don't know if you can uh, just get the bracket or not uh, it's just a standard bulldog jack that they use with a special bracket. Finally, Toro makes one of these, but a company called Donbar, D-O-N-B-A-R, just Google it. They make an assist for you so that you can get on and off your machine easier. If you're old and stiff like I am, getting on and off a zero turn is just a pain in the butt. The new step cutout here is nice on this Toro, but even then, that's about a 10 inch step up there. So it's, it's a good size step for me. So this bar, you can mount it anywhere you want. If I decide to keep this mower, I'll probably mount it right here along the side and it's designed so it lifts up. That way I can use it to get on and off the machine, and I can also use it to stand up after I've been sitting on the machine for a while. That's the other problem with getting old, is if the seat's too low, it's hard to get out of. All right, that's it for the walk around. So far, I am very happy with this mower. Uh, I like the design of it. I like how it's built. I like the strong fabricated deck. Uh, I like the heavy channel frame on it. I like the, really like the large front tires. Uh, I've had a chance to drive it around the yard, and I like the suspension on the seat, and I like how smooth it drives. Will it cut good? Well, I expect it to cut very good, and we'll find out here as soon as I get some grass to mow. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments section below. If you like this video, please like it. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe. So I'll talk to you later. Bye. Down in the hood.